I have always considered the Trident of the Oracle to be one of the strongest weapons in Final Fantasy XV, but for some reason I haven't used it all that much in comparison to other weapons. I recently started using it again while clearing the Menace dungeons, after the Royal Edition content made me use the Chapter Select feature and reset my endgame progress, and after using it for a while I realized something. I have greatly underestimated how good this weapon is. I am Asetoni, and this is Final Fantasy XV Weapon Analysis, featuring Trident of the Oracle. The Trident doesn't have any truly bad attacks, but some parts of the moveset are certainly less impressive than others. I'll quickly cover those here, just so I can concentrate more on the good stuff afterwards. The aerial attacks don't cover a whole lot of distance, and since aerial enemies tend to move a lot, these attacks don't really have much use. It also has an aerial dive move, which is actually a fantastic attack, but you can't really ever get it to trigger because air stepping isn't possible with the royal arms. Air steps would even make the normal aerial attacks of this weapon pretty decent, but clearly making air stepping available for more than two weapon types would break the delicate balance of this game. Since the aerial attacks are rather lackluster, being able to jump into the air at any point during the combo also becomes somewhat pointless. The combo opener of the trident is... Uh, I have trouble saying anything about it. It's got kinda good damage, short range, and it's not terribly fast. It's just... blah. Yep, that's my high quality detailed analysis. It's blah. It's serviceable, I guess. I wouldn't call it good. Chances are you'll have something better equipped for opener attacks. Blah. But time to talk about all the good stuff, the basic combo. It's got good speed and fantastic damage thanks to the clones you leave behind. The enemy does need to be mostly stationary for max DPS, but even the base attacks have more than enough damage on their own. Honestly, this is the strongest basic combo in the game, the only reason why some weapons do more DPS is due to their passive abilities. Then there's the face counter, which is just super good. High damage, good speed, good range, good stagger, just use it, it's really good. And then we have the Warp Strike, which is, once again, really strong. It also doubles as a dodge due to its very long iframe window, but the damage and break potential on it are just fantastic. And just like every attack from the Trident, it also leaves behind these holograms, which will do a lot of damage. The only downside to this warp is its massive HP cost, taking upwards 40% of your health if you connect every hit. The reason why I hadn't made a weapon analysis video on the Trident before now was because... That's all I really had to say about this weapon. It's got a really powerful basic combo, just whole circle. That doesn't really make for an interesting video now, does it? Then I realized what the forward attack can do, and it changed everything. I will now go back on two things I said in my previous videos. I said... I think the Scepter is the strongest royal arm in the game, and one of the strongest weapons in the game, period. I was wrong. The Trident is the strongest royal arm. I also said this about the stagger system of this game. It's too unreliable or too obscure for you to be able to build any strategy around staggering enemies. I was wrong. You absolutely can build your strategy around staggering enemies with the Trident's forward attack, and that is precisely what makes it the best royal arm in the game. The Trident's forward attack is extremely simple. It lets you perform the normal combo ender at any point in the combo. Combo enders in general are not really good in FF15. They tend to be slow, risky to use, and don't really do enough damage. Although the Trident's combo ender does fall into this trend and is suboptimal DPS, it's still one of the best combo enders. It's got good range, it's not as slow as most of them, has low recovery time and acceptable damage. However, the one good thing all combo enders share is their high stun and vulnerability modifiers. The Trident is special because not only does it have a good combo ender, but you can also very easily spam it by using the forward attack. You usually cannot build your strategy around staggering enemies because you usually cannot spam moves with high stun values. They always come at the end of a combo and even though spears, swords and shields have a pretty reliable stun on their charge attacks, they still pale in comparison to the trident and can't be spammed quite as easily. The Swords of the Wanderer have the same forward attack as the trident, but with the swords the combo actually ends when you do the forward attack, but with the trident it just keeps going. 
All in all, what this means is that you can do one attack, combo ender, one attack, combo ender, one attack, combo ender, ooh, another combo ender. This has absurd stun potential, you can stunlock almost every enemy in the game like this. On top of that, you still leave behind these hologram noctis... noctises? Nocti? Anyway, they also greatly contribute to your overall stun potential. And even that is not all. The vulnerability modifier is also extremely high on this attack, so you'll be able to put the enemy in vulnerable state very quickly. And you know what happens when they're in vulnerability state? They are stationary and they take extra damage. I remember someone saying a certain weapon did its max DPS when the enemy didn't move. So start holding that circle button and unleash absolute hell on the enemy- oh they died. This is the playstyle you wanna have with the trident. Just spam the forward attack as much as possible. You always have to do at least one basic attack in between, but just keep spamming the forward attack and the enemy gets thrown around until they eventually fall over, after which you can just switch to doing the basic combo for better damage because there's no real point in trying to stagger them anymore. Still, even though this weapon has outstanding stagger potential, it doesn't change the fact that the system as a whole is very unreliable. Enemies can and will randomly break out of your stun locks, so you still have to be paying attention and be prepared to dodge incoming attacks. And most combat encounters are against multiple enemies anyway, so by no means are you safe from being attacked. Also, while the forward attack is nice, it's sometimes not even necessary. Smaller enemies are just thrown out of your reach if you use it on them all the time, and since the trident has little to no forward momentum on its basic combo, you have to use another forward attack or some weapon swap tricks to catch up to them without stopping. Sometimes the best strategy is to just hold circle. The basic attacks are more than enough to keep small enemies at bay, and you'll also do more damage per second. Other than that, there isn't much else I can say. Set up your combos with a better opener attack if blah is not good enough for you. Use the face counter whenever possible. Warp is great, but be careful with the health loss. And that's it. Oh my god, what am I gonna say here? The Trident has pretty much a complete moveset, so it doesn't need any other weapons to support it. You'll probably have sort of the father for the stat boost anyway, so you already have a good opener attack from that. This leaves you with two slots to do whatever the hell you want. I like to have a Link Strike weapon, so Hyperion would be my pick for one of them. For the last slot you could go for pretty much anything. An aerial weapon, a ranged weapon, sort of the wise, a machine, spell, ring, a stat booster. Even Swills and Ragnarok are pretty alright. My point is that not only is the trident an amazing weapon on its own, it also allows for phenomenal build variety. You can use all sorts of stuff with it, it doesn't restrict your choices in any meaningful way. Same with accessories, go for strength and bit like you always do on a normal build, or use some fancier accessories if that's what you want. The trident works well with all of it. This setup here is something I would use, copy this if the breadth of options is too much. The jury for the best weapon in FF15 is still very much out, and the trident is a strong candidate. It is outstanding in almost every regard, but its stun potential is the real draw of the weapon for me. Yes, on paper the trident does lose in damage to wills and the scepter, but the frequent vulnerability states and the fact that you don't need to dodge as much because the enemy is caught in stunlock make up for this. The trident is still not as good as those two against enemies that cannot be stunlocked by it like some of the bigger bosses, but even still, third highest DPS isn't exactly a bad spot to be at.